Live from the Guadalajara capital, this is the GBN Television News. GBN, covering you from the Grenadine Island chain to Brooklyn, New York, via the World Wide Web on www.gbn.gd. The news headlines is brought to you compliments. GUT Credit Union. In my dreams with GUT. They're the ones for me. I'm reaching my dreams with GUT. They're the ones for me. Since 1983, they've been solving the country, and we like all their finance and giving the people what they want, what they need, what they love. Come and join the family that's here for you all the way. From birth to graduation, your first job to your home and your car through your golden years. The GT Credit Union has been actively supporting mission building through its many sponsorships and programs, including Financial Literacy Quiz, Pass the Torch Calypso Program, Junior Cooperatives in Secondary Schools, CPEA, and the Time CC Grants. The Credit Union has helped many people make their dreams come true. Let them help you with yours. You don't have to be a teacher to be a member. So what are you waiting for? GUT Credit Union It's where you belong This is the GBN Television News for today, Tuesday, March 10th, 2020. In the headlines, new travel restrictions imposed from midnight. Grenada Invitational postponed. Limited COVID-19 test kits on island. Jamaica records first case of COVID-19. And coming up in sports, national senior men's football team may soon be without a head coach. Details right after this message. This is GBN, the nation's news leader. This segment is brought to you by Courts Grenada Limited. Why not stay in, turn off the alarm clock, and sleep some more on your perfect mattress from Quartz? For the widest range of mattresses from the world's best brands, the best value guaranteed. Shop today and let our sleep experts help you to decide on the best option to suit your needs. At Quartz, we don't just sell mattresses. We're offering you the best night's sleep. So, sleep in a little on your new mattress from Quartz. Quartz, bringing value home. This is News at 7. Good evening. I'm Ken Roy Batiste. And I'm Beverly Tellisford. Government says ports of entry cannot be closed to the world. However, in response to the COVID-19 outbreak, a travel ban has been imposed for people who have traveled to Italy, Germany, Iran, South Korea, and China in the last 14 days. Akisha Felix has the details. As the world battles with the deadly coronavirus, the government of Grenada, in an effort to protect the well-being of citizens, is increasing travel restrictions. During the weekly post-cabinet briefing, it was announced that government has taken the decision to impose a travel ban on five countries, with the hopes of the list increasing in a matter of weeks. Minister of Health Nicholas Steele spoke on the countries that the travel restriction applies to and the strategy used by the government in selecting the countries that are chosen for the ban. We have placed uh, travel restrictions on individuals who would have a travel history in the last 14 days to Italy, Germany, Iran, South Korea and China. Um, that this will continue until further notice and we are looking at other um, countries as well, possibly before the end of the day, that we would add one additional country, but this is a fluid situation and we keep monitoring it. The, the, the strategy um, is based on where we see widespread community um, on transmission. Widespread community transmission and, and in our opinion where it's not under control. Um, so that for us presents a risk to our citizens. Um, so Italy, Germany and, and I can be frank we have already discussed with, with foreign affairs for them to and it's, it's, it's figures based. 
Prime Minister Dr. Keith Mitchell noted that while it is important to ensure the safety and well-being of citizens, Grenada's main ports of entry cannot be closed to the entire world. Um, we can close off this country to everybody. Yeah? We have to continue to live. And um, it seems to me that um, the we have to also, that's why this is an international problem and we have to be straight and honest with each other. So it seems that the ship and the, the, and the crews and themselves or to, to check their passengers appropriately to make sure they were not exposed to the places of, of, of where the problem exists at the community level. And um, based on that, because we can't just say because the Italians don't, don't let them come, that, that don't make sense. That, that, that means we will be killing the tourist street completely overnight. According to Minister Steele, nationals who have a 14-day travel history in these countries will be quarantined upon returning to Grenada. Akisha Felix for GBN News. The story to report, the report, the fourth annual Grenada Invitational has been postponed amid COVID-19 concerns. Here's the rest in this report. Just for the persons who bought tickets, um, you will have the option to hold on to the tickets. If you don't want to, you want a full refund, it is available at the box offices. And to the persons who bought the tickets online, they should have already been notified and those, those transactions will be reversed and you will be refunded in full. Organizers of the fourth annual Grenada Invitational say due to the fluidity and uncertainty related to COVID-19, that the fourth annual Grenada Invitational schedule for the 4th of April is postponed. In an exclusive interview with GBN on Tuesday, chairman of the Grenada Invitational Games, Dexter Mitchell, said that the response to this decision has been disappointment. Well, the, the initial conversations, not directly with the athletes, but the athletes' representatives, um, would have been initially disappointment. But then, um, and that would, that would have been last week because that conversation started sometime last week. Um, but then, obviously, with more information and, and especially what is happening in the U.S., uh, a lot of our athletes are coming from U.S. and from Jamaica. Um, there is across the board understanding, precaution, the need to be to be cautious about this 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 virus that we we don't know enough about. Um, but like I said, the yeah, initial disappointment, but obviously erring on the side of caution right now. Mitchell told GBN the disappointment is from local, regional and international supporters. I think people appreciate the fact that we were very forthcoming, very outright, and we did not delay the, the, the decision. We did not want to have to cancel a week before or uh, a field, uh, uh, a meet with only half of the athletes and damage the brand. I think what we're able to do is secure the interest of the, of the national public here in Grenada of, of our citizens and, and protect the brand and, and wait until everything settles so that we can put on another fantastic world. Comes. Grenada Invitational organizers say that they will monitor the global conditions and along with track and field's governing body, world athletic and broadcast partner, a new date for the meet will be announced once the COVID-19 is no longer a threat and normalcy in travel and other routine activities has been returned. Tony Julian, GBN News. Kids for testing for the dreaded COVID-19 are now on island. This, health officials say, will increase early diagnosis and containment of the virus. More in this report. Minister of Health Nicholas Steele announced on Tuesday that government is now equipped with 25 kits for the testing of COVID-19. The minister announced in a previous press briefing that the government purchased the kits to strengthen the ministry's readiness in tackling the virus in Grenada. So if, if we suspected somebody of, of having COVID-19, we would test them um, with this swab. It's inserted in the nose that it's the, this test tube is sent down to CAFA. We have two cis protocols set in place for that as well. If it is where we think there is community contact with that person we need to know immediately, uh, we have arrangements with RSS aircraft to come collect the test and bring it immediately to, to CAFA. If the minister says one sample will be taken from a person who displays symptoms of the virus and within four hours of arriving 
Caribbean Public Health Agency, CAFA, the result of the sample should be known. Within four hours of receiving it, CAFA will give us the results. Once we have those results, then we will make a decision based on if they're negative, then the person can go on. Um, if they're positive, then we act accordingly. In most cases, if we are going to test somebody, we're not just going to test for COVID-19, we're going to test for influenza as well in order to determine whether the person has COVID-19 or influenza because the, the symptoms are very similar. Coordinator of the COVID-19 Committee, Dr. George Mitchell, says that once there is a need to use the kit, it will be available. The team at the ministry, who is um, of course headed by Dr. Uh, Francis Martin, the CMO, uh, will uh, basically distribute on demand making sure though that the cases fit the definition for testing. In other words, uh, we're not going to just go wildly, wildly just like uh, t testing folks. We have to fit that particular definition to be, to be tested. Both Dr. Mitchell and Minister Steele were speaking at Tuesday's post-cabinet briefing. For GBN News, I am Rena Pear reporting. Jamaica has confirmed its first case of the coronavirus. Health and Wellness Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton made the disclosure at a news conference on Tuesday at his new Kingston office. According to the Jamaica Gleaner, the female patient has been in isolation since Monday after showing respiratory symptoms. According to a travel history, she returned to Jamaica from the United Kingdom on the 4th of March. Confirmation of the case means that there are now four Caribbean countries with the virus. The others are Dominican Republic, St. Martin, and St. Bart's. It was reported that efforts will be made to trace all the people she may have been in contact with, noting that those people will be quarantined. World Health Organization Director General Tedros Adhanom says the spread of the new coronavirus has nearly reached pandemic proportions. You know, over the weekend, we crossed 100,000 reported cases of COVID-19 in 100 cases. It's certainly troubling that so many people and countries have been affected so quickly. Now that the virus has a foothold in so many countries, the threat of a pandemic has become very real. However, he said it would be the first pandemic in history that could be controlled. The bottom line is we're not at the mercy of the virus. The great advantage we have is that the decisions we all make as governments, businesses, communities, families and individuals can influence the trajectory of this ep epidemic. We need to remember that with decisive early action, we can slow down the virus and prevent infections. WHO officials pointed to a turning point in the virus's spread. The global infection count is well above 100,000, and more than 100 countries have reported cases. We take a break, but still to come, cruise ship workers to return home. And the government of Grenada to hold meetings with private sector and NGOs on current global outbreak of the coronavirus. Stay with us. This is your Grenlec, and our story is one of change and development. We strive to ensure that you have the reliable service you depend on every day, at home, at work, and at play. We understand the importance of electricity in propelling our economy and affording our customers an enhanced, convenient, and comfortable life. Our performance indicators show that Grenlec is one of the best utilities in the Caribbean, but our mission is far from accomplished. We now strive to exceed your expectations. This is our Grenlec, and we are proud to serve you. A new in-home experience is here. All your services bundled into one simple plan. Faster, more reliable Wi-Fi so that you can binge, play, and stream uninterrupted. Unlimited flow local landline minutes mean you can talk and talk and talk. 
plus the best in TV entertainment with over 70 channels and 12 in HD. All for $200 a month with the new all-in bundle. With Flow, it only gets better. Now buy three bottles of Clay's dishwashing liquid for only $8. Available at Best for Less Supermarket, Eat Fresh Supermarket, MNC Joe's Supermarket, Four Pride Supermarket, The Food Fairs, Carinage and Grand Ants, Roberts Enterprise, Springs Food Mart and Charlo Supermarket. Other Clay's products available, hand sanitizer, fabric softener, hand washing liquid, dish washing liquid, and toilet cleaners. Distributed by Fortune Foods Company Limited, Tempe St. George. Are you looking to rent chairs and tables? Then call Waggy T Rentals. We rent tables and chairs for any event. We have seven different types of chairs. Plastic, folding chairs, gray and white, resin white chairs, conference chairs, even Shivari chairs in gold and white. We also rent six feet and eight feet rectangular folding tables, four feet and five feet round tables, and even cocktail tables. Give us a call at 444-RENT. That's 444-7300. Six, eight, or visit our office at Frequente Industrial Park, Grand and St. George. My name is Ed Southgate. I'm uh, from West Tech Building Products in Calgary, Canada. We supply uh, St. Lou UPVC windows with a North Americanized European window system as well as a slider system that's for residential homes. The commercial system is good for hotels, hospitals, any commercial buildings as well as high-end homes. Our products are all tested to a AMA standard, which is the North America standard for windows and doors. Our PVC is also has 10 parts TO2 which is high in the industry that we feel gives it the longevity that he requires because of the harsh climate that you guys are in for sun and wind and rain. Westec Building Products has partnered with Mohammed from St. Louis UPVC to offer him one of the higher end products that are available in the marketplace. This is my second visit here and we check the quality of the product and the way their processes are to ensure they follow the standards that we set when we first came here over just almost a year ago. And I think that with that quality, you can be assured you'll have the performance in the windows that you're looking for for your homes or businesses that are available now right here on the island. Why not stay in? Turn off the alarm clock and sleep some more on your perfect mattress from Quartz. For the widest range of mattresses from the world's best brands, the best value guaranteed. Shop today and let our sleep experts help you to decide on the best option to suit your needs. At Quartz, we don't just sell mattresses. We're offering you the best night's sleep. So, sleep in a little on your new mattress from Quartz. Quartz, bringing value home. Egyptian mosquito spreads the dengue, chikungunya, and Zika viruses. It only needs a small amount of water to breed. Check for stagnant water regularly. Buckets including the rim should be drained and kept dried. Avoid using flower pot plates, but if you do, ensure they're emptied every two days. Get rid of water that settles in potted plants. Dish rack trees should be emptied daily. If your pipe leaks, throw away the collected water and rectify the leakage promptly. Mosquitoes also breed around the roots of plants. Change the water, rinse the roots and scrub the veins to remove mosquito eggs daily. Remember, by destroying mosquito breeding sites, we can prevent dengue, chikungunya and Zika. When I need shelter, warmth, security, I know you'll be there. Something in these moments lets me know you care. Maybe the way you shield me, maybe it's your smiles. And the way you tell me, it's okay to try. Now I'm invincible, I can back my sack. I can take the long road, cause it's okay 
is Ariza. Your financial freedom. Your future. An unknown number of Grenadians employed aboard Grand Princess cruise ship will soon return to Grenada after 21 of their cruise ship passengers tested positive for the coronavirus. We get more in this report. A number of employees aboard Grand Princess cruise ship will return to Grenada and be placed in quarantine. The ship had been held off the coast of California after 21 people tested positive for the coronavirus. Health Minister Nicholas Steele was asked about the Grenadian employees aboard the ship, and he said that they will soon return to the country. The same applies for any Grenadian. Um, any Grenadian coming home from a high-risk area or, in the instance, yes, we do have the names of the, the um, Grenadians who were on Grand Princess. Um, if they were to return home, they would be immediately quarantined. If they were to be allowed on an aircraft on the other side, I cannot stop that. Um, but because they're Grenadians. Um, and the assumption is that on the other side in the United States that they would check them thoroughly and make sure that they are asymptomatic, show no signs of COVID-19. But once a Grenadian arrives here from any high-risk zone, they are immediately quarantined for 14 days. In Oakland, the Grand Princess ship began to disembark passengers on Monday after spending days in limbo off the coast of California. More passengers were disembarked from the vessel on Tuesday morning, according to an announcement from the ship's captain, John Harry Smith. The Grand Princess, carrying more than 3,500 passengers and crew, was finally allowed to dock at the port of Oakland on Monday after being held at sea for several days. Asymptomatic passengers will be taken to military installations in California, Georgia or Texas for screening and a 14-day quarantine. There's no treatment for COVID-19, and coordinator for COVID-19, Dr. George Mitchell, has said that they'll be led by the examples of affected countries. The, the strategy is basically to, to support, uh, to ensure that persons are experiencing the, the best possible health, and to ensure that we have all the supportive um, mechanisms to assist with the treatment of those cases. So, um, yes, you're correct. There is no known cure for it. We are watching the, the developments in the, in, in, in the places where uh, those experiments are being conducted. And um, we will um, basically uh, seek to, to advantage ourselves with those uh, when the time comes. Tony Julian, GBN News. Local business owners, civil society groups and other entities will come together this week with government officials to iron out a collective approach to the coronavirus outbreak. Rena Pair brings the details. On Thursday, government officials will be meeting with several members in the local business community, civil society, tourism sector, along with other major stakeholders. Prime Minister Dr. Keith Mitchell says the meeting will focus on the way forward in dealing with challenges that will arise from the spread of COVID-19 to Grenada. The invitation for the meeting that we're having on, on Thursday afternoon is a major meeting that we are inviting all stakeholders, the hotel sector, the Ministry of Tourism, the, the GTA, um, the cruise, cruise representative, the firms that, in, that um, are agents for the cruise ships coming in here, the port authority would be represented, the, the hotel association, right, that sector would be be represented also. The trade union movement, uh, different, not just G G G the, the trade union council, but different members of each trade union. 
Prime Minister Mitchell emphasized that the fight against the virus is a national issue that should involve everyone, including other political parties on island. Because we may have to subsidize some of the workforce in several areas, too. So it's going to be a national issue in every single form. We invite in the official. Um, we do not have an opposition in parliament, but we do have opposition in the country. And you consider the, the, the National Democratic Congress as the, as the, the leading in opposition force in the country, so we will be inviting them and any other party who is interested, because this is a national issue that affects every single body. Due to other regional engagement, the minister stated that he may not be able to attend Thursday's meeting, but in his place will be acting Prime Minister Gregory Boeing. Dr. Mitchell also announced that he will be meeting with officials from the International Monetary Fund and others within international communities next Monday. It was brought to attention the, that the international communities was taking initiative. The IMF, for example, and the World Bank, they are convening a meeting. It's supposed to be on Thursday, but it's now shifted to Monday at, at 2 o'clock in the afternoon to meet with ministers and prime ministers of countries in the region to look at direct support, financial, and that has to be immediate, to deal with the problems that we all face. For GBN News, I am Rina Pear reporting. We advise you to stay with us. We'll be right back. Now buy three bottles of Clay's dishwashing liquid for only $8. Available at Best for Less Supermarket, Eat Fresh Supermarket, MNC Joe Supermarket, Pope Pride Supermarket, The Food Fairs, Carinage and Grand Ants, Roberts Enterprise, Springs Food Mart and Chalo Supermarket. Other place products available, hand sanitizer, fabric softener, hand washing liquid, dish washing liquid, and toilet cleaners. Distributed by Fortin Foods Company Limited, Tempe St. George. Coming to Grenada. One of the most spectacular concert events in Christian music. It all happened 7 p.m. Saturday, March 21st at the National Cricket Stadium. Featuring five-time Grammy-nominated and seven-time double award winner Karen Peck and New River. From the American television show The Voice, Emily Ann Roberts. From Canada, the amazing music from The Chitons. From the island of Jamaica, the talented and gifted Foster Triplets. Plus the best of Grenadian gospel artists. Again, this all happens 7 p.m. on Saturday, March 21st at the National Cricket Stadium with some of gospel music's finest. Karen Peck and New River. Emily Ann Roberts. The Chitons. The Foster Triplets. And more. Tickets sold at all ticket outlets. Proceeds go towards enhancing youth work in Grenada. George F. Huggins and Company, Grenada Limited. A telephone number 440-8787. Or visit our website at www.tropical.com. 
Email us at quinedasales at tropical.com. Tropical Shipping, committed to island life. This is GBN. We've got the means, the power, and the medium. This segment is brought to you by Flow. A new in-home experience is here. All your services bundled into one simple plan. Faster, more reliable Wi-Fi so that you can binge, play, and stream uninterrupted. Unlimited flow local landline minutes mean you can talk and talk and talk. Plus the best in TV entertainment with over 70 channels and 12 in HD. All for $200 a month with the new all-in bundle. With flow, it only gets better. Several environmental concerns have been voiced by both residents and business operators over the preparatory work being done to allow construction for the Six Senses Hotels in La Sagesse. Akisha Felix has more. In 2019, it was announced that Range Developments, the property developer for Six Senses Hotels, will initiate a project that is scheduled to open in 2022. However, with preparatory work being done to facilitate this major undertaking, most of the mangrove in the area has been uprooted, and this is causing concerns among environmental advocates. Michael Maransky, a business owner in the Las Vegas area for over three decades, claims that officials from the Organization of American States offered recommendations to the government and in turn government guaranteed protection of a portion of the mangrove area. However, he said due to the present development, these recommendations have been compromised. And uh, the people I met from the OAS at the time told me that they were going to write into the, um, uh, recommend to the government that the estuary where the river comes down I'm sure you saw that today. And the salt pond, which has a mangrove around it, that these were going to be protected areas, uh, not for development. But they were hoping, as we all hope, to see development, you know, throughout the country and not just in, uh, in tourism in the Grand Anne's, True Blue, Lansapine areas. So uh, we called ourselves La Suggest Nature Center in, re you know, in regards to understanding that these would be protected areas. Maransky said he's a Excited that development within Grenada has finally reached one of the rural parishes. However, a greater concern lurks with overdevelopment. My thoughts are development is wonderful. We're excited about it. We're excited that that uh, this is happening in our area, but we're concerned about overdevelopment. We're concerned about destruction of e ecosystems. So um, it's like anything else. We want to find a balance. We our number one industry, the tourism, is looking for people looking for green tourism the protected environment. So we have our concerns when you have a, a mangrove, which is so complex and so essential to the environment, and it's been uprooted, the entire thing. I think you guys probably have some uh, photos of that or some footage of that. We get worried. We understand that Six Senses, the hotel, is very environmentally conscious and, uh, and aware of these things. But that, that uh, ripping up that entire mangrove worries us. And the whole hillside now, when the, when the rainy season comes, where's all that mud, mud going to go? It goes into that salt pond. And that salt pond won't have the capacity any longer to filter itself because the mangrove is gone. GBN contacted Minister of Climate Resilience and the Environment, Simon Steele, for a response on the concerns surrounding the destruction of mangrove. However, up until news time, no information was given. Akisha Felix for GBN News. Meanwhile, owner Michael, Michael Marinsky, owner of Lasso Jess, uh Nature Center said while every development must be commendable or commended, other problems are being faced. He told GBN that issues such as a proper sewage disposal system to get rid of wastewater must be addressed. He believes more can be done in order to better promote the greener environment that Pure Grenada is known for. Those 300 families that move into the housing project at La Suggest, that wastewater, that sewage, where is it going to go? Into the river. Where does the river go? Into the bay. So the same with the, these hotels. I mean, just like we have the problems in True Blue, where does all the sewage go there? The, oh, it's overdeveloped there. We all know that. Where does our wastewater go? Where's the sewage going? What are we doing to the environment? So my, my whole point is let, let's find a balance between this. Let's make sure that people who are putting millions of dollars in are going to get a return on their 
investment and 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 we're all going to be uplifted by it okay our property values will go up but they won't go up if our bay becomes compromised by wastewater or mud and we and we have to know where the sewage is going and so forth so i say god bless uh, you know let, let's let's have development let's not have over development and let's be conscious of of what we're doing have a balance between development and protecting what is you know the beauty of grenada the reason that everybody comes here Prime Minister Dr. Keith Mitchell will be among the OECS delegation to visit Guyana this week as tensions intensify following the March 2nd elections. Rena Pear has the details. Regional leaders, including Prime Minister Dr. Keith Mitchell, will accompany Chairman of CARICOM and Prime Minister of Barbados, Mayor Motley, on Wednesday to Guyana to pave the way forward in establishing peace within the country. I've been one of those persons asked to lead a delegation of leaders to Guyana tomorrow to attempt to bring some semblance of peace and order to Guyana at this particular time. You, those of you who may remember, 1997, I was a Chairman of CARICOM. <laughs> We had a similar situation in Guyana where the results of the election were not accepted by the opposition and there were quite some upheaval in the country at the time and I had to go in there and try to bring peace and we were able to resolve the issue as car. After the country's regional and national elections on March 2nd, the nation still awaits the results to be declared by the Guyana Elections Commission, GCOM. An injunction has been filed in the Guyana High Court by its supporter of the main opposition People's Progressive Party, aimed at stopping GCOM from declaring the results. The situation has created uncertainty and uneasiness, with some reports of unrest in the streets. Prime Minister Mitchell says the delegation chosen to address the matter is made up of senior members within the CARICOM community. I'm leading that, that process. So we've been asked, so myself, Prime Minister Motley, who is chairman of CARICOM, um, Prime Minister Gonzalez and Prime Minister Skerritt. We are considered to be three of us, considered to be three of the oldest serving leaders in the region. So we've been asked to join the chairman of CARICOM on a mission to Guyana to Dr. Mitchell was speaking at Tuesday's post-cabinet briefing. For GBN News, I am Rina Pear reporting. All right, station for this evening's GBN ISO compliments Clear Vision Eye Center. Tonight's ISO highlights massive destruction of mangrove in the Lasages area where the Six Senses Hotel will be constructed. You can send in your photo and video submissions via our social media platforms. A good eye captures all. GBN ISO is brought to you by Clear Vision. You know us, but we knew. You feel at home with every visit. An experienced team offering personalized courtier service and trendy brand name lifestyle products. We're changing the vision care landscape one customer at a time. Clear Vision Eye Center. People and technology coming together to help you see the world with a clearer vision. We take a break. More news when we return. It's new, innovative and classy, and it cut above the rest. Your one-stop shop for bathtubs, kitchener, customized doors and windows, and even a new paint shop. We also sell quartz and solid surface countertops. At Eminent Hardware, we offer best prices, excellent service, efficiency, and reliability. Visit us at Dusty Highway, Grand and St. George, or call telephone number 440-6757. M and Hardware, from foundation to roof, let's build together. How going on, boy? Hey, hey, good old things. Hey, day easy. Yeah. Boy, in line, boy. Your house looking a real good day. Boy, it's thanks to the hardworking and professional staff at the Housing Authority of Grenada. They handled me real nice. They did my plan, they did the construction, and I didn't even have to worry about that thing. They were there with me every step of the way, supervising the job, asking me about my concerns, giving me feedback as a house took shape. They were there from start to finish, and even put the keys in the palm of my hand. I give them an A++ for customer service. Oh, 
with people from housing bad boy boy not bad excellent if you're thinking about constructing your home why not consult the housing authority of Grenada? you could visit them right down in the sandino complex or give them a call 440-1015 or 440-1016 or check out their website hag473.com they go handle you they go jog your blocks they go draw your plan they go talk your materials <laughs> hey man wait wait the housing authority of Grenada is your choice for affordable housing and a stress-free construction experience. And so it begins, a journey like no other. Jungles so lush, they make emeralds jealous. Water that sparkles like diamonds. with more facets than precious gems. This is where good times are had, where love is strengthened, where memories are formed. And when it all comes to an end, bring home something that will never fade. Colombian Emeralds International. Bring home more than a memory. Esplanade Mall St. George's, Maurice Bishop International Airport, and Sandals Grenada Resort. Telephone number 230-1023. As the world prepares for the 2020 Summer Olympics, some of the world's top athletes will begin their journey to Tokyo, right here in Grenada. Everything comes down to this moment. The fourth annual Grenada Invitational takes place on Saturday, April 4th at the Karani James Athletic Stadium. World-class athletes. From an athlete's perspective, I understand and value the experience that an athlete has when they come to a place like Grenada. World-class event because it feels safe. It feels warm. World-class event. It's beautiful. You've got a stadium right by the sea. Grenada Invitational, Saturday, April 4th. Tickets to the Grenada Invitational are now available online at gotofed.com. GBN leads, the others follow. This segment is brought to you by Republic Bank. Grenada's number one track and field event is back. The Intersecondary School Championships is back at the Karani James Athletic Stadium. You must be there. Experience the intense rivalry between athletes of our secondary schools on the track and in the field. Blame yourself if you miss the first ever Republic Bank sponsored Intercol 2020. Blame yourself if you miss a day of exciting action on the track. Be there every day. Day one, two, and three. The 53rd Intercol Championships takes place on March 31st, April 1st, and 2nd, starting at 9 a.m. each day. Come, let's celebrate the inaugural Republic Bank Intercall. Come out, families. Come out, past students. Come out, school-based supporters for the return of competition on the track and in the field. After weeks of auditions, followed by the selection of semi-finalists, the ones making it to the final stage for the Digicel Grenada Top Talent Competition 2020 have been announced. We have more in this report. The 12 finalists of the Digicel Grenada Top Talent Competition have been announced. The finalists were selected by a panel of judges, voting by the public, and participation in training and development sessions conducted by industry professionals. Promotions officer for the competition, Brenda Batiste, announced the finalists. We are delighted to announce the 12 finalists for Grenada's Top Talent 2020. Here they are in no particular order. Jalen Jones, Akia McKee, Cheryl John, Lionel Norris Francois, Katie Mills, Chriselle Smith, Jen Jarrell Bartholomew, Josh Robertson, Dianera Treasure George, DeAndre Ald, Shaquan Olive, and Tafawa Pear Jr. Congratulations to all 12 of you. Here's a sample of what the finalists have to offer. Oh, 
wings will fly. I've been good to you. I've been good to you. Top Talent Finals will take place at Spice Basket at Bolio St. George on Saturday, March 28th, beginning at 8 p.m. Tickets go on sale this week. Cherry and Blackman Stephen, GPN News. We wish all of them the very best on the 28th of March. Still to come from us, the weather, followed by the sports news. See you in a while. Grenada. 1795, one man with a sense of destiny. Tonight we stand our ground. Tonight we stand on the side of history. 14,000 slaves with a dream and a promise. Julian Fedor, a Heritage Theater production written and directed by Chris DeRiggs, 28th and 29th March, 4th and 5th April at the Trade Center. People was not made to live like this. It's like we have a cause. Julian Fedor, an action-packed historical drama. I see blood falling from the sky. Falling up that mountain river, flowing from Belvedere Hills. I see blood. Four big nights of theater, the play the nation has been waiting to see with Samuel Gilvey, Lisa Grappy James, Robert White, Dale Devine, and other top of the line acting talents. Opening Saturday, 28th March. Get your tickets now. When you think of Granville Cooperative Credit Union, what comes to mind? A reliable financial institution that has stood the test of time. Maybe you think about the convenience and quality financial service they provide. Do you think about their readiness to help you retire, achieve your academic goals, build your dream home, buy the piece of land or the elegant car? Or maybe the convenience of their different locations, Jubilee Street in Grenville, the sub-office at Belmont Estate, or the new outlet on Lucas Street in St. George's in the Derek Sylvester building. Maybe you always consider how they're always a phone call away. 442-8602 or 438-4228. They're also online. www.grencu.org. No matter what comes to mind, remember, Grenville Cooperative Credit Union is the best place to save and to borrow, working with you to make your brighter tomorrow. It's detox time again at Nirvana Natural Hall Clinic Detox Center. The festive season is over. So let's start 2020 looking and feeling like a boss with our many body cleansing options. Purchase detox products as low as $50. Purchase detox combo packs as low as $100. Receive 10% off on all in-house colonic irrigation treatment. Take control of your health now. Don't delay. Call us on two. 3166424187115 or 4497753. We are located in Belmont St. George's, close to the Fall Edge area. These offers are valid from January to March for Wild Sox Last. Nirvana Natural Health Clinic, Detox Center. Detox your way to health. Keeping an eye on the weather, this is GBN. We've got you covered. 
Weather for Grenada, Cariacou, and Petite Martinique valid for tonight and the following three days. Weather tonight, generally fair and breezy, becoming partly cloudy at times, with isolated early morning showers possible. Tonight's minimum temperature, 25 degrees Celsius. Winds east-northeasterly to east-southeasterly at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Seas moderate to rough, waves 6 to 8 feet in northerly swells. A marine advisory is in effect. Tides low at 10 p.m., high at 3.45 a.m. Sunrise tomorrow, 6.18. Weather for Wednesday, March 11th. Generally fair and breezy, becoming partly cloudy at times, with brief morning showers possible. Weather for Thursday, March 12th. Generally fair and breezy, becoming partly cloudy at times. Any showers should be light and brief. Weather for Friday, March 13th, generally fair, becoming partly cloudy at times, with a few brief morning and nighttime showers possible. Time now for your sports news with Tony Julian. And this time around, sporting fans, organizers of the Grenada Invitational say that they have taken the difficult decision to postpone the games amidst COVID-19 fears. In a statement released on Tuesday, the organizers highlighted that after extensive deliberations with local public health officials, broadcast partners, sponsors, and athletes' representatives, it was decided to take the side of caution. Chairman of the Grenada Invitational Dexter Mitchell highlighted the possibilities on when or if the games can be hosted this year. Well, we don't know when the outbreak is going to end. So, um, so some of the meets that have rescheduled, they have res rescheduled um, 12 months away from, from the original date. Um, so we are waiting on the IWF. We are waiting to see what happens with the virus. When things become a bit more normal, with travel and so on. So that, for example, if the Olympics move to later on in the year, then we might have our games later on in the year as a prelude to the, to the Olympics. Um, if it doesn't, then we have to look alter at alternative dates. But it is very, very early for us to see uh, that um, to select a date or to, to choose a date. We are working along with the IWF. We are trying to accommodate them as much as possible in relation to the Olympics if that is moved, and then we'll, we'll take it from there. The GFA is seemingly facing another debacle, this time linked to the senior men's football team and its head coach. The story, which first began brewing on the online sports page Spy Style Sports Review, may have rippling effects within the Grenada Football Association. With just about two weeks before Grenada the senior national men's team play their first international friendly since qualifying for the CONCACAF Gold Cup. The Grenada Football Association may have to search for another head coach. In recent weeks, current head coach Shalri Joseph has been expressing concerns as to the renewal of his contract, which expires on the 12th of March. Joseph led the Spice Boys to CONCACAF glory when they qualified for the 2021 Gold Cup. In an early morning post on social media, Shalri Joseph thanked his supporters and friends for sticking with him through the past year, while indicating his intentions to return to Boston after his contract expires. Meanwhile, the GFA says that it's committed to renewing a contract with Shalri Joseph. President Chenny Joseph told GBN that he met with Shalri back in October, November and December, and gave his assurance that he was satisfied with his performance. However, there were some areas of concern regarding his actions off the field. This, however, did not in any way affect his score relating to the job that he was required to do. The executive met on Saturday with Shalri, and he was again assured of a contract renewal. The only sticking point at that time was his request for remuneration of more than 80 percent more than what he was getting previously. GFA is not in a position to offer that at this 
time, though they have recognized Shalri's contributions, do warrant an increase. The FA is hopeful that the negotiation regarding the increase demanded can be addressed without him having to go to social media. President Joseph said that he has a right to solicit support. However, the GFA believes that something of that sort is not to be dealt with on social media. To date, all outstanding payments due to Shalri have been paid. GFA's focus is at this time on the game against Martinique, and they are hoping that he will focus on the game at hand. Another round of matches was witnessed over the weekend in the Sandals National Under-15 tournament. Seven matches kicked off at venues around Grenada, and competitions officer for the GFA, Bruce Swan, gave a rundown on the results. In Tangent, St. Fosses, they got the better of five stars, three goals to two. Ashton Edwards and Tyrese Simon, they scored for St. Fosses. Well, they had their own goal um, from St. Fosses, and E.J. George, he scored for five stars. In Queen's Park, we had three matches scheduled. Fontenoy United, they failed to honor the fixture versus Queen's Park Rangers. Queen's Park Rangers won the game by default, and they get three goals. FC Comahon, they played GDSS and won the game three goals to nil. Kian Hastiolik, he scored two, and Jaden Patterson, he scored one. Combined Northerners, they lost to Springs, two goals to one. Daniel Lewis, he scored for Combined Northerners. Jordan Morris and Kenson Kato scored for Springs. Hurricanes SC took home a huge victory over the weekend. Over in Rosie, we saw Paradise Football Club versus St. John Sports. That game drew two goals each. Zidan Rennie and Kishan Samuel, they scored for Paradise. VJ Valsing and Cody Francis, they scored for St. John Sports. Zid Douglas, he got a red card in the game. SAFL, uh, they got the better of not stars, three goals to one. DeAndre Richardson, he scored two, and Tishan John, he scored one. DeAndre Mitchell from Nassau, he scored the lone goal. Hurricanes, well, they gave um, Bellevue 15 goals to nil. As in Francis, he scored six goals. Nash and Sylvester, three. Kishan Pierre, two. Dishon Julian, two. Jaden Handel and Sean Scott, they had one apiece. The latest sport report there for you. Of course, do stay tuned. When we return, it'll be with a recap of tonight's major stories. Now for a recap of the headlines, new travel restrictions imposed from midnight. Grenada Invitational postponed. Limited COVID-19 test kits on island. We can tell you Jamaica records first case of COVID-19. And in sports, national senior men's football team may soon be without a head coach. If you missed any part of this newscast, a repeat of it will be at broadcast at 10 o'clock tonight. All right, you can continue to follow us online, gbn.gd, or on GBN Television Facebook page and YouTube channel for these and other stories. I'm Ken Roy Batiste. And I am Beverly Tellisford. That's news. Good night.